Why are there spikes welded to the top of this pillar? And why are they across the street from a shelter for asylum seekers? Hundreds of migrants are approaching five days of sleeping outside a Midtown hotel. Folks are homeless, they gotta go somewhere. It's like what you would do for pigeons. Didn't seem right. There are long lines at a re-ticketing center for asylum seekers as they look for a place to stay. It's a display of poverty in the middle of one of the richest areas in the city. What they're doing is they're actively deterring certain populations from coming to our downtown and enjoying this space. So New York is building hostile architecture into its public streets and spaces in areas of town frequented by asylum seekers. And it's not just private businesses like banks and offices who are using hostile architecture. The city itself is also installing these things in a way that's so sneaky, most New Yorkers haven't even realized it yet. But before we get into specific examples of how the city and businesses are building things like spike strips, blocking sidewalks with needlessly oversized objects, and removing things like bike racks and bathrooms from places that are supposed to help asylum seekers, it's important to understand that New York is a America's largest sanctuary city. And over the past year, 170,000 people have come here seeking help under the city's right to shelter rules, which guarantee room and board to anyone who asks. But there's a problem because while the city itself continues to offer shelter and care to those who ask for it, it made me pretty uncomfortable to realize that the city's building things in those exact same places that might make life more difficult for people who have nothing. And that's why I was pretty shocked to see sharp looking spikes installed by one of the city's shelters. Well, we might as well give them the old seat test. Oh man, that is definitely not comfortable. They are effective at what they do. And if you try to walk through here, these things can catch your clothing. And that's because these spikes are what's known as hostile architecture, which basically means they're hostile to any use case other than their intended purpose, which looks like it's to keep people from getting too close to the bank's windows. And that brings up a pretty big question. Did the bank put these here because of the shelter across the street, or is there another reason? Well, first we need to look at what was happening when this facility opened. The scene here outside the city's Roosevelt Hotel remains chaotic and and disturbing. People telling us they have been waiting two, some four days, waiting to be processed and sheltered. So this footage is from the long lines of folks that suddenly appeared in this part of town directly across the street when the shelter opened. Now it's important to understand that these spikes, these are new, these were not always here. And if we go back in time on Google Street View, we can see what the bank looked like back in 2022, a year before the shelter opened. And look at that, there were no spikes here at all. It was the same infrastructure, just without any sharp edges to it. But fast forward to 2023, and here they are. And you can see from these rivets here that they were definitely installed after the fact, not just on the pillars, but also on the railings. Now, if there were no spikes here, you could probably have 10 people sitting over here. And you'd have a great vantage point of the hotel. But even though these spikes were installed at a very suspicious time, this railing isn't designed as a bench. And although the spikes look quite sharp, perhaps they are here as a not so gentle reminder that this isn't a place to sit. Almost 24 hours ago and the line hasn't grown up. I mean, it's the same amount of people for the past 24 hours. So it seems like they are keeping these people for whatever reason. So that's what things were like across the street from the bank when this whole thing started. And you can see at the hotel, they've still got these metal barricades right across from the entrance. Things here were pretty disorganized and it very well could be that so many folks were waiting that maybe people were across the street by the bank trying to figure out where to go while they tried to get inside. And the reason stuff like this makes people uncomfortable is because it's connected to a public place. It's essentially part of the sidewalk and public spaces like sidewalks are supposed to be for everybody. On top of that, it seems kind of unfair for a private business to monopolize the sidewalk around the exact same time the shelter showed up. However, as you're about to see, these spikes might be the only thing we look at today that has a legitimate safety purpose as they keep people from sitting or climbing on the railing and getting hurt, which isn't something anything else we're going to look at was designed to do as far as I can tell. But as strange as it might seem that the spikes weren't here before this was a shelter, there's actually another business over here that did something that could be considered even more controversial. So this office is also directly across the street from the shelter. And at first it looks like your normal run of the mill New York City office. But for some reason there are a lot of these massive oversized planters on the sidewalk. Why is that? These things are so massive one could say they look a little bit suspicious. In fact, I think these are the largest pots I've ever seen. They definitely didn't come from the garden section at Home Depot. And if you want to try and hug a tree, this is the wrong one to do it because you can't wrap your arms all the way around this thing. But while it's nice to see more plants in New York, what 
what most people don't know is these are in fact a piece of hostile architecture. Or at least they could be. And as we can see from Google Street View, these weren't here either, which means they didn't show up until coincidentally around the same time as the hotel began its use as a shelter. And when you think of how big these are and the fact that you've got the spikes across the street, it looks like a coincidence, but a coincidence isn't exactly proof. But look at this in San Francisco, where they also have a humanitarian crisis going on. Businesses have been using planters to block sidewalks. And what businesses found was that by putting massive plants on the sidewalk, it eliminated a space where people might want to congregate. As you can see, there's people hanging out on the other side of the sidewalk. But over here, you can see these take up about one third of the available sidewalk space. Which means if you were to try and hang out on this side of the sidewalk, people would bump into you when they came the opposite direction. And as you can see, when people want to pass each other, there isn't really a whole lot of room, which makes it look like the positioning of these is designed to have natural pedestrian traffic break up any groups that might be over here. And as you can see from the barricades and the folks who are outside now, this was definitely a spot that had a lot of people waiting to get in. But what's also interesting is the building's actual entrance doesn't seem to have anything blocking it. There are a few pots here, but these are a lot smaller and these were on street view before the shelter was across the street. And definitely these are a much more normal height, size, and weight for a decorative sidewalk plant. Which means that if those massive pots are in fact hostile architecture, the office didn't feel the need to put them in front of their own entrance because it's actually around the corner from where the hotel entrance is. In fact, the nearest pot to the office is all the way over there by the hotel entrance and the office entrance is right over here. And although we've got even more controversial examples of hostile architecture to investigate, some people would say that even though the spikes were sharper than these massive plants, these actually do a better job ruining everyone's quality of life because the sidewalk everyone uses is now smaller. On top of that, it doesn't really seem like these have any other positive function other than being a decoration, whereas the spikes might actually be there for safety. But the next stop on our list is even worse and possibly even more hostile. This building here is a former school that is now being used as a facility where asylum seekers who've lost their shelter beds can reapply to get replaced elsewhere in the shelter system. That's what the metal barricades are for. You can see there's a news crew here now, there's police presence, and the line unfortunately is snaking all the way around the block, and these folks might be here for hours. This line and this facility, this is how the city has directed all single adults to request a new placement if they want one. Also, you'll notice that there's no awning covering this, so if it's raining, if it's snowing, if the sun is uh, beating down on people, they've got no choice but to sit there while that happens. But the city's made other hostile architecture decisions that affect the entire neighborhood, not just the folks who are outside waiting. But before we see what those are, critics say this system of having people wait outside all day long just to get inside is controversial and could be dangerous. This slow-moving line outside the former St. Bridget School on East 7th Street snaked around the corner Tuesday morning. The single asylum seekers we spoke with waiting here have reached their 30-day stay limit at the city-run shelters. So, sometimes there's a line here, sometimes there isn't. Today, there definitely Definitely is. And the reason this is potentially dangerous is because waiting outside in the cold for eight hours a day, even when it's not freezing, could still cause frostbite. Also, many of the folks that are here aren't necessarily used to freezing cold New York City temperatures. Now, luckily, it looks like the line's making progress, but sometimes when it gets very, very long, people will stand here all day long and they won't even get a place to stay. They'll have to go home and come back. But in spite of the situation here with the line, the city did something recently that was very controversial to the park directly across the street. And this is the hostile part. That right there is the only bathroom left in this entire park. And it's behind a massive chain link fence, which is locked inside a construction area. Now, at one point there were bathrooms here that people could use, but now those are all gone. This is all that's left. But these were the bathrooms that the folks across the street were using, but now they can't, they're gone. And that's because hostile architecture isn't just about installing something that makes people's lives miserable. It's also about taking things away that make people's lives more comfortable. But this is Tompkins Square Park, it's huge. It's got three playgrounds, basketball, courts and the traditional bathrooms here are on the other side of this construction site they're being renovated so they're out of order and there's one of new york city's few public pools here so they're spending millions of dollars renovating this park but it's right across the street from the asylum center and that means this can't be an issue of money because there's plenty of money here being spent but the city says they don't have money to maintain public bathrooms now yes there's a bathroom inside this shelter facility but that's only accessible by people who are already inside sometimes the line's very long and they don't let people inside to use the bathroom and then get back in line they say no but not only do you have a situation 
where hundreds of people are waiting in line for something. You've also got an entire neighborhood here around the park. You've got some of the city's priciest places over here. And now the park has been made worse for pretty much everybody. But as ridiculous as it is that the city's removed bathrooms from a public park by an asylum center, the next hostile architecture move the city's made combines everything we've looked at so far in one of the most controversial ways possible. So here we are at the Row Hotel, another luxury hotel used by the city as an emergency shelter. And all of these bikes out front, these belong to some asylum seekers. But last summer during a police crackdown, bikes were removed and taken away. Now many of the bikes involved in the crackdown were unregistered mopeds. They have to have a license plate, they have to be registered with the city. A lot of them were not, that's why they were taken away. But look at what's in place of where you used to be able to park. Yes, that's right, we've got more plants right here. And look at this area where the plants are right now. If you review the footage of the radio, you'll see that at one point in time, this area was all empty space and there was plenty of bike parking. But now the empty space has been taken up by the plants. At one point you had bike racks that went all the way across this entire thing. But clearly those no longer exist and it doesn't look like they're coming back anytime soon. Look right here, you can see a hole from where the bike rack was and then we've got plants in the way. Look at that bull, it is brand new. Still got some of the plastic wrap on it. No dings, very straight, very shiny. It's almost like these plants are brand new and that's because they are. Also, this entire section of 8th Avenue in front of the hotel was redone to add in this bike lane. Which means the city spent millions of dollars setting up a nice area to park your bike over by Times Square and now they've removed half of it. There's the entrance to the hotel and look at that, the bikes can go right out front. At least that was the case, but now because of the city's decision to remove the bike racks and put in these hostile planters, now it's not being used for anything and look at what it did to the street. Several lanes of street were taken out. That just contributes to traffic congestion. And it's supposed to be bike friendly, but now there's nowhere to park your bike. And there's another problem with this whole thing, and that's because if you're an asylum seeker, one of the few job opportunities for you is to do delivery, and that's what the mopeds are for. So now you've got people in the shelter upstairs who can't park their bike and work for a living to try to get out of the same shelter system. And just as running the shelters isn't cheap, neither is installing and removing things for no reason. But during this investigation, I uncovered another piece of hostile architecture back by the original shelter. And it looked even worse than plants or bike racks that are no longer available. But then I did some digging and I learned something else. Look at all these little guys. Definitely hostile architecture. They, um, you can kind of wiggle them a little bit, but they are not coming out. And look at where we are. They are right across the street from the hotel and the office and the bank. But these little guys are not on the sidewalk. In fact, they're attached to this office building. If these weren't here, they would potentially make a good seat, but oh, oh, no. Nope, they're almost as bad as the spikes. But if you sit on top of something, then you can sit on them because these steps would be like the perfect hangout spot. Now, when I saw these things here, I figured they were gonna be like everything else that's recently popped up over here by this particular shelter and some of the other shelters. But I ended up being very surprised because when I went back on Google Street View, I noticed that in 2022, before the shelter opened, these were still here. In fact, I had to go all the way back to 2017 after this building had finished a recent renovation to find the very first photos I can of them in 2015, I didn't see these. Which means their installation had nothing to do with the asylum crisis. Also, as you can see, this isn't a space that members of the general public would accidentally wander into. In fact, it looks like they lead up the steps to some sort of maintenance closet or something. There's a massive lock on the door. I don't hear anything inside here, but that is definitely designed to open. Looks like someone broke into this one, so now they got the lock and chain. And technically, these are on private property, but again, they're not something that anybody walking by would be worried about. And I guess their intention is to keep the area somewhat clear in case people need to get into whatever's on the other side of that closet. And that's definitely different than removing bathrooms from a park, removing bike racks, or setting up a spike strip. But the big question is, should companies, or especially the city, be spending money on things like hostile architecture when that money could be better spent to help those very same people? And is it okay that some of these devices lower everyone's quality of life all at the exact same time? Are these the right answer? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.